The zero product property says that if we have two things multiplied together, let's call them A and B, and it results in zero, then either the first thing, A, is zero, or the second thing, B, is zero. Think about this for a second. You can pick any number. Let's say I pick negative 3.5, and I multiply it by some other number, x. Now, if I want that to equal zero, the only conceivable way that can happen is if x itself is equal to zero. Negative 3.5 times, let's say, positive 3.5, that's certainly not going to make zero. 1 over 3.5, there's nothing we can multiply negative 3.5 or any number by and get zero except zero itself. This is useful because I can break bigger problems into smaller ones. So if I have something like x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals zero, an equivalent form by factoring is going to be x plus 2 times x plus 3 equals zero. These two equations are exactly the same thing, but this one allows me to use my zero products property. So if the whole thing is equal to zero, that means that either this has got to be zero or this has got to be zero. And those are two much easier problems. You can very easily solve these two little mini problems with just a little bit of algebra. So that means that my two possible solutions are x equals negative two and negative three. So all this factoring that we do in algebra, one of the main reasons that we're going to do it is to allow us to break bigger problems, such as this quadratic, into smaller problems, which only involve a very simple algebraic step in order to solve. The zero products property allows us to solve for quadratics and higher order polynomials by breaking them into little pieces. Thank you.